Hey, what's up guys? Uh, just wanna take a second to say thank you so much for tuning in to our online service. In just a minute here, I'm gonna jump into uh, a message that I hope is encouraging to you and gives you a little bit of hope in the midst of these uh, seemingly uncertain times. Uh, I just wanna say this next week, we're hoping to wrap up, whether it's again online or whether we're able to meet back in person, I don't know what that'll look like. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, next week, we're hoping to jump back into our Monopolize series. We'll wrap that up and so, uh, we're looking forward to that. Just want to say a couple things. Uh, the first is this. Anytime that we have to um, not meet together on a Sunday, it's always a hit to the church financially. Uh, and so I really want to encourage you, if you could, when this video is over, to get online. You can go to firstchristian.com slash give, and you can give online. Uh, and we'd, again, I would just really love to encourage you to do that. And if you've never done that, it's so easy, so convenient. Just literally the click of a few buttons and you're able to do that. And if you've never set up reoccurring payments, man, talk about just taking it to a whole nother level. You could do that and then every couple weeks or however you set it up, uh, you could actually give to your church that way. And so we'd love to encourage you to do that. Again, that's firstchristian.com slash give. And then lastly, I just wanna encourage you with this. When this video is done, and uh, you're, you're finished with the message here, uh, maybe gather your family together or just get some, I don't even know how you do it, some saltines and maybe cherry Coke out of the fridge and, uh, and take communion together. It's just a, a moment to, to remember and to celebrate what Jesus did for you and for me when he went to the cross and his body was broken and his blood was shed uh, so that he could give us the gift of eternal life. And so we wanna celebrate that today even though we're not meeting here in person at the church. Uh, man, I hope you guys have a, a really great Sunday. Stay safe. I hope you're encouraged by this message. So I grew up going to church. It was always a part of my life, but it wasn't until I was about 15 years old that I gave myself to Jesus and walked into, entered into a personal relationship with him. And when I did that, everything changed. I mean, I just went all in uh, for Jesus. I learned how to play guitar and started leading worship and youth group. I, uh, when my youth pastor was feeling like particularly daring, he would sometimes ask me to speak. Uh, I just went all in. I was, I was sort of on this like spiritual, you know, high or mountaintop season in my life. And, and I can remember in that season, I was thinking about that, that this week, I can remember having conversations with friends who were going through just hard circumstances, maybe like a parent getting divorced or parents getting divorced or some other really difficult thing. And I can remember uh, in my youth, and, and I would even say in my immaturity, just saying things like, hey, uh, you just, you know, you got to trust God. It'll be fine. Just trust God. And at that season in my life as a 15, 16 year old kid, uh, I hadn't really been through any sort of hardship. I hadn't really been through any sort of big struggle. Maybe, maybe a girl had broken my heart or maybe, I, I don't know, mom or dad grounded me for breaking curfew, but certainly no like big struggle. Uh, and so it was really easy for me in that season to just say, hey, come on, just trust God, trust God, right? And then I grew up. And then all of a sudden there were seasons, there were things that I went through that were really hard. And you've had those too. You know what I'm talking about. Maybe for you it was, it was a divorce and it was just heartbreaking. You were like, how in the world am I gonna get through this? Maybe it was sitting in a hospital waiting room and your kid's on the other side of the wall in surgery and you're like, I don't even know what to do here. I am freaking out, I am terrified. And it's those moments, isn't it? It's those moments where we really have to trust. It's those moments where I think that trust is, is tested. And we begin to see like, how much do we really struggle with this control idea? And how much do we really trust and understand and believe that there is a God who is in control? I think we're facing some of that this week, right? I'm not trying to ruffle any more feathers or, uh, scare you or terrify you anymore. But one of the things that I've sort of recognized this week is, man, even the experts, I don't know, you know, how much of an expert they actually are. Even our political leaders, I don't know, you know, they've never really been through this before. And so we're all doing our best, but there's certainly this sort of level of uncertainty that exists 
right now with this whole coronavirus thing. And so maybe me even saying that, you're like, oh man, I hadn't even thought about that. The experts aren't even experts, what do we do? And I'm sure they know their stuff and all of that, but this is all just such uncharted territory. And one of the things that it's, it's bringing to the surface in my heart is, man, the one person that wasn't surprised by this, the one person that is still in control, the one person that isn't freaking out is Jesus. And as followers of him, we're supposed to try to follow his lead and walk in his direction. And so I think this is a great opportunity for us to recognize that he's in control and a great opportunity for that fear and that trust to kind of be tested. Again, it's like when I was 15, that wasn't going to be tested. It just wasn't there yet. But now, now it's like, okay. How much do I really trust the guy upstairs and that he's in control? Uh, every now and then I'll hear people say this, uh, oh, the Bible's outdated. Man, it was written thousands of years ago. Can we really trust that it means anything to our lives anymore? But I wanna read this passage. This is out of Philippians chapter four, verses six and seven. And if this doesn't speak to you right now uh, in this sort of crazy time, uh, I don't know what will. Here's what it says. It says, do not be anxious about anything. So again, anything coronavirus, or maybe it's not the, the virus necessarily that has the anxiety being drummed up. Maybe for you, it's the fact that your kids are out of school for three weeks and you're not stocking up on toilet paper, you're stocking up on wine. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm allowed to even say that, but uh, don't be anxious. Don't be anxious. Maybe for you, it's the fact that you're now trying to figure out the financial ramifications of this, right? Like, okay, what do I, uh, how do I do? I'm going to have to take three weeks off of work and I don't know how I'm going to pay the bills, right? And there's anxiety that's coming up. Here's again what it says. Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Here's what this passage is telling us. It's saying, we shouldn't live in anxiety, but when those moments come, when real life hits, again, I just gave some examples, when real life hits, we're to go to God with prayers and petitions and requests and pray for peace and go to him and trust again that this whole thing, this hasn't surprised him. He, he's, he's cool. He's got this, okay? We're supposed to go to him and petition him and ask for peace. And then here's the really cool thing. It actually says this, he'll provide that peace and it says it transcends understanding. So he can actually, if we go to him with requests for this peace, God, just bring my anxiety down. God, bring, let, help me to know that you're in control. Help me to be, just kind of breathe for a second. He'll provide that to such an extent that it will transcend understanding. It won't even make sense. The peace that you could feel if you go to him with that petition transcends understanding. And so here's what I want to do is I just kind of wanted to, um, I wanted to share with you just three reasons that I think we should not live in fear right now. And these are pretty simple, but I think they're also powerful if we were to apply them to our lives. The first one is simply this, fear robs us of joy. One of my favorite passages, I quote it often, is where Jesus says, I came to give a rich and satisfying life or an abundant life. One of the things that we see with Jesus, he's constantly, and all throughout scripture, we're, we see we're called to live joyful lives. As followers of Jesus, he's the greatest thing ever, right? And so if we're chasing after him, there should be a joy that we're living with. But think about this for a moment. If you're living in fear, man, that's going to rob you of joy. If you're living, uh, just sort of hold up in your house with your, again, with your toilet paper or, or whatever, and you're just sanitizing doorknobs just 24 seven, just try, like, again, I'm not saying we shouldn't be unwise, but you're just living at this next level of fear. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of joy that's being stolen from your, from your life, from your kids' lives, from your, your spouse's life. It, and it's just no way to live. I stumbled across this passage this week in, in Psalm 94. It says, when anxiety was great within me, your, meaning God's, your consolation brought me joy. That's what God wants to do. And so we got to stop robbing ourselves of joy because we're letting fear sort of drive the car. 
Here's the second thing I want to throw at you. It says that fear diminishes spiritual growth, but trust, man, trust cultivates it. Trust grows it. And this comes back to that idea of, of, again, of control. If we're trying to control every, well, that means we're not letting God have control in our lives, which means I'm going to go ahead and, and just go on a limb here and say, there's not a lot of spiritual growth happening in your life. If, it, if with your finances, you're saying, uh, God, I, I'm not going to trust you with this. I'm just, then I'm going to guess there's not a lot of growth happening there spiritually. If in your um, personal time, if you're saying, God, I, I need all, all this to myself, I'm not going to give it to you. I'm going to guess there's not a lot of growth happening there. When in our lives, we're letting fear take charge, it's going to diminish our spiritual growth. But when we're leaning on Jesus and we're saying, hey, I'm going to trust you. I don't even understand it. I'm a little nervous. I'm a little anxious. I'm feeling a little tested right now. But God, I'm going to trust you. It's in those moments that I think God cultivates and, and waters our spirituality. And it's in those seasons that we see growth. I had a, a moment like this a few years ago. I was having a conversation with my friend uh, Kendall, who goes to church here. And uh, I was going through uh, a lot of stuff in my life, and I was going through um, my, my marriage sort of falling apart and, and all of that. And I, I remember my biggest fear in that season was my kids, right, and how it was going to affect my kids. And I remember talking to Kendall about this, and she said something to me that has never left me. She said, uh, and she'd been through a similar thing. She said, Ryan, one of the things I realized in my life uh, was that as much as I love my kids, Jesus loves them any, even more. And I remember her saying that. And I remember thinking to myself, like, how true is that? I love my babies so much and I want the best for them. And as much as I want to protect them and just guard their hearts and I want to do all the right things and I absolutely want to do that, I remember sort of having this peace all of a sudden where it was like, okay, um, as much as I want those things, Jesus wants them even more. And Jesus is going to fight for them. And Jesus is going to take care of them. And Jesus is going to take care of me and he's going to take care of us. And I think that, again, all comes down to that trust aspect. We have to trust that God really is in control. And as much as we want to be, sometimes the best thing is just really, truly saying, Jesus, I'm praying for peace. You've got this. I'm trusting that you've got this. And then here's the last thing I just want to throw at you. And this is big. I, I, I just, again, I want to share this with you. I think this is true, that fear isolates us. But trust brings us together. Fear isolates us. Have you ever noticed this? That when you're particularly paranoid about something, you're really struggling through something, it's in those moments that you sort of, uh, you, you just sort of go off by yourself. And you let those thoughts just sort of manipulate or sit in your head. It's those moments where you're lying in bed up all night and it's just you and that fear. But when we give that to God and we say, God, I'm going to trust you, those are the moments that we're a little more prone to bring other people into our anxieties. Those are the moments that we're a little more prone to bring other people into our struggles. And those are the moments that I would even argue that we're, we're more willing to step into those fears and try to bring some sort of compelling force of good out of them. See, one of the things that I'm really praying for right now in our church and in our community is that this, uh, because I believe God can bring good out of even bad things. I'm praying that we won't choose to isolate because of coronavirus. Now, I know we can't gather in big groups, but um, in the ways that we can, we'll choose to step into ministry opportunities because of this, because we're trusting God and we're saying, okay, then what does this present? If there's a single mom who's who's really going to struggle because she doesn't know how she's going to work over these next three weeks. Maybe you're in a situation where you could bless her financially and this won't strap her and, and wreck her uh, right now. Maybe you could offer to watch her kids so she could go to work. Maybe because you're choosing to trust instead of fear and isolate, this is going to present a ministry opportunity for you. And there are countless other ways that that can manifest itself and take hold. See, let me circle all the way back. When I was 15, I was 16 years old, it was easy for me to trust because I hadn't been through anything yet. But here's what we're recognizing right now. Maybe now more than ever in your life, maybe not, but maybe now more than ever, this is presenting you with an opportunity to really see how much do I walk the walk when it comes to my faith and my trust in Jesus. And so here's what I want you to consider. I want you to consider asking God for peace. I want you to consider how this opportunity that is before us, and we're going to try and view it that way. 
I know that sounds weird, but we're going to try and view it that way. How is this helping me move from fear to joy? Or how is this helping me grow my relationship with Jesus as opposed to uh, just sort of letting it damper it? How is this allowing me not to isolate, but to step into opportunities for ministry? I believe all of that could come about in this season, but you have to choose to relinquish control and to trust the man upstairs because again, none of this was a surprise to him and he's got this. And so here's what I wanna do. I wanna close out our time with a prayer. And we're going to pray for peace, and we're going to pray for God uh, to be in control, uh, not only of this situation, which he is, but we're going to pray for him to be in control of our anxieties and our struggles and our dynamics, whatever they might be. So let's pray together. Father God, we just, we come before you now, and God, we pray uh, that you would provide us with peace. God, we pray right now that we would lean into these opportunities to trust you. God, now more than ever, for some of us, this is it. This is the test. God, so we want to we wanna trust. So grow that in us. God, I pray that we won't live in fear, but we will push out of that and live in joy. God, I pray that we won't um, allow this to be just this, this moment of isolation, as yes, we're trying to be wise and make good decisions and not put ourselves at health risk. But at the same time, God, we wanna be people uh, who, who are trusting you and are looking at, at, at this as an opportunity to bring about uh, your kingdom and your goodness. And so God, help us not to, because of fear, just sort of uh, hold ourselves up, but God, help us to figure out how we could bless others in this season. Uh, God, and again, just remove our anxieties, remove our fear, help us to trust you. You are in control. You know what you're doing. We trust you. God, thank you for being a God who loves us and hears us and walks with us. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray, amen.